Orange Country. Orange Country. God, this is so awesome to me that you two are are like both on here. Um, <laughs> I don't know that we will do a formal introduction because we're already on here, but I'll just jump in real quick and introduce uh, my dear friend, one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, and I'm so glad she came to do this. Uh, so last minute too, but she's a Grammy winning, incredible musician. She is a style icon. She truly is great at everything. And she's also very humble. So I know she's not going to love that I'm saying all this, but, uh, you know, I have another hour here to disparage her reputation. So we'll start out with saying how much I love her and how great she is. So welcome Karen Fairchild to Orange Country. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. (laughs) I'm so happy to be here. I got a spray tan just for y'all. Wow. That's impressive. Well, she gets us. Yeah, she really does. <laughs> That's actually one of the like, requirements. I, I was it thinking is. I, I, I need I need a spray tan, so I did it myself. It's not very great, but it looks amazing. Sure actually, it look like very that. bright, and your gold is shimmering. The whole thing. It's a, I love it's a little too. It's a little too shimmery, isn't it? Um. Mm. No, actually, I mean, I have to say, and I think Shane and Ursa would support me on this. I think the more necklaces, the better. I just think you can't have ever enough. And yeah. I really like go for that heavy, uh, like Mr. T vibe. I'm, I'm here too. for it. I'm about it. And I feel my best when I am chained. I love it. Same. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so I just get fire. I, it, it, and usually Gina does have a, a thousand necklaces on. Actually, uh, she, she couldn't probably get all that together as she was trying to uh, become an engineer this morning. She could probably run a studio in Nashville, Karen, at this point. Um, It is amazing the amount of what seems like nothing, how much stuff goes into trying to do this. You know, now that we're in a world where we can do things in different locations, um, I I feel that stress every week when we're going to do this. It does not become, you know, more. The last time we did this, the ceiling was falling in on Gina and the location where she was doing it. And she was up there holding. (laughs) Holding it up. She was. Oh my God. It was after the hurricane, and um, and then today she had some technical difficulties. Yeah. And, you know, as we <laughs> as, <laughs> as we always like to talk about on here, it does feel like the law of attraction. In that, once those things start rolling, it feels like the next thing you know, your dog shits on your carpet, which also ha- <laughs> happened to Gina this morning. It's just all oh. the things here for me. It's just serving up for me this morning to see. I think it's a test this morning to see what I can get through, but, but, but I still got it done, but yeah, it's a challenge. The technology of things it's in one way. I think it's an ease because we can do things from home and we could do more, but we're much more self-sufficient. I think people forget that we're not, we didn't come up with the cell phone as an extension of our arm, you know? So (laughs) for me to like, have to do things on the fly and change it up is actually like a challenge. And yeah, sometimes I have to sacrifice accessories and (laughs) that is that for me. You (laughs) did it though. You have a lot of kids, don't you? You have a lot of children. Yes. I did not have to get any of the, I like doing these Wednesday mornings because I don't have children on Wednesday mornings. I get them back today after school. So it's a good time because I don't have that excuse to like be like, oh, the kids. So I take that out of the equation because if I did have them also in the morning, we wouldn't have a podcast, honestly. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's I guess the same so. around yeah. here. And Karen has a son too. How old is Elijah? 13. Yeah. And, oh, and that's the age know- they turn, right? <laughs> Woo. It's a, it's something. I mean, I love having like adult conversations, but then I also don't love having adult conversations, you know? Um, but yes. And I know, I know Shane and Michael's children very well. Um, and so it's fun. We got to come out to, to see the house in Santa Barbara. It was awesome. I it was mean, so awesome having Elijah and Dash on the basketball court. And Elijah's, know. you know, older than Dash. So Dash always like follows him around and, and looks up to him. And actually that night, uh, 
Little Big Town played the Santa Barbara Bowl and it felt so, I, I don't know, gratifying, satisfying that my family was here playing music. They got to come over to the house beforehand. We got, you know, that was right after we had moved here. We're feeling scared about putting ourselves on an island. It felt like a little nod from God that that we had you guys over and then we got to go see the show and, you know, the kids <laughs> watched none of the show because they were way <laughs> too concerned about, about their friends, uh, Daisy and Dolly and Elijah running them around backstage and showing off, which always makes my kids question why I'm just a songwriter. <laughs> just. They're just, just like, why don't you have a bus? Do you know how much fun it was backstage? <laughs> um, but uh, Karen, when you guys do interviews now in post COVID, how often do you guys do stuff via Zoom or because there's four of you guys, you have to go into a studio and try to be together? Well, we try to be together. We feel like the chemistry is better when we're together, but also it's, it's chaos. Like, you know, like when you ever watch the view or something and you're like, they're all talking on top of each other, you know? So, um, sometimes it's better when we're sitting in the room together because we can kind of that ebb and flow of not stepping on each other. Um, we also weren't big Zoom writers during COVID. Were you? Did you write a ton? No. Um, I mean, I started to feel the pressure as I saw Ashley Gorley and, you know, all these other people writing on Zoom all the time. And I was like, oh, I got to keep up. But it was really <laughs> hard because... Uh, because I like being in the room too. And Gina and I have actually really struggled with this because it's not practical every Wednesday for us to drive a few hours either way. But God, it's so different when you can actually, you know, be in the room and touch someone inappropriately while you do the podcast. <laughs> yeah. um, it's the you magic. Know, Gina really likes that. And so yeah. it's, it, but we're able to get her focused um, either way. She can imagine what it's like to have my body in the room. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I I do I am a little sad that this is now we've just made it work this way. Not just us. I'm talking about every everybody. And you know, it's it, we used to have to make it to each other, and now we don't. And now so, we don't. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. weird. It's weird to like watch, and now they're always going to like someone's bedroom or yeah. office, you know, and. Um, it's that, that is a little strange, but also, you know, very convenient for sure. It is convenient. I think the thing that's been, that's blown my mind about, about getting to know someone who's on one of these reality shows is that I'm so worried about what the background looks like all the time. You know, it's like, his everything picked up? The kids trash every room. I never know what's going to be sitting out. And, you know, Gina and I talked about how in her world, you kind of got to get over that because there, I, I doubt that they're like, which angle do you like better, Gina? Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're like, I know. We'll, we'll hold the cameras up and down this, today. No. Right. <laughs> is yeah, it ever, care. can I ask a question about, yeah. because I've been watching Housewives for so long. Is there ever a question where you can just, I mean, a time where you can go, hey, I need a minute. Like um, off camera. You can say that absolutely, but they they <laughs> follow you, and then yeah. they just show that they show, which is basically this season on the show. Shannon, of our cat with Shannon, every is just her like refusing to want to do her job, like storming off every ten minutes, and they finally got to the point where they're like, "Well, we're just going to show that." Then you know, um, I've always kind of subscribed to the like idea that. I, you know, you sign on to share your life and it's always, I feel better to just put it out there and move through it, whatever it is, rather than try to control it or hide it. It's mm -hmm. just, it doesn't work. And you know what the thing is, people um, allow you to be a human when you show that people that you are a human. That's what I found. Yeah. It's like when yeah. you try to pretend that didn't happen or I'm better than that, or I would never do that. The, then people they snuff viewers are smart you know and they see what's going on there um and so for me i always just say it's better to just lay on the sword and, and let the pieces fall where they it where definitely they makes people relate to you it's the same with music karen i mean don't you think it's like people yeah. 
can so see through in authenticity or when we're chasing something. Uh, I think what people are drawn to, especially uh, with some of the music that is coming out right now with like Oliver Anthony and with Zach Bryan and um, you know, there's many others who are just basically sitting down and, and laying it on the line. And that is such a, I, coming from the world of show business and the show of it and the glamour of it and wanting right. to put on a show, it is such a weird adjustment to watch people just going, I'm just going to sit down and sing you the song I just wrote. And it's could be about politics. It could be about, you know, murder. It could be about all of these things. And, and I'm not saying those songs didn't exist before, but there was a gloss about it. There was a, you know, like sort of a veiled curtain of, yeah, we're going to talk about politics, but we're going to make sure it rhymes and, and, and is in the perfect pentameter and all these things first, mm -hmm. get it recorded. Now people are just putting it out there. And I think that is uh, sort of the testament to how obsessed we all are with reality reality television it feels yeah. like music is like reality music now it's you know, interesting because like, there's this weird um it's like in some ways as a society we're completely unfiltered nowadays like in that aspect it's kind of cool levels of playing field also every shot everybody has an opportunity that's kind of cool um but in other ways because of the technology we're so filtered you know like the way we look and the stuff we're putting out there and I try to move away from that. It is easier when you work for a network. Is your hand there? It's like everybody knows what you look right. like on your worst day anyway. So you don't feel the need, I guess, to pretend so much. But it is a very interesting time. And I'm I am super curious to get both Karen and she and your take on that whole Oliver Anthony thing because I never heard of him. And then I was on my way to a USC football game with Travis the other last week. And my, with my best friend and she was like, you got to listen to this guy. And, you know, you listen to some of the music and like the messaging in there is just mm -hmm. so wrong. But obviously like I'm not in a music country artist. So I am so curious to know what you guys think coming from the industry. Karen. I had, uh, I've changed my opinion. Uh, okay. and when I when I heard it, I w it was a little off putting the second verse to me and I, I didn't really get the connection. Um, and I found it a little hard. What is the second verse? That second verse is like about the, um, about poverty and the about welfare, welfare checks and stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. in the, the fudge rounds and, yeah. um, getting obese on fudge rounds. And I'm probably not, I'm paraphrasing, but, um, and I didn't, I was like, I get what you're trying to say, but uh, I don't know if that was the right way to say it. Um, but I will say a couple of days later, maybe even a week later that that song exploded, he came on to his own Instagram or something and fully explained what he meant and what he intended. And he also said, if the left think that I'm here for them, I'm not here for them. And it's funny to the right think that I'm, I was, I was writing that like, yeah, I'm the guy on the right, you know, politically speaking. And he said, I'm neither, I'm neither of those things. And then he talked about the reason why he wrote the second verse and his, his angle on, on poverty and um, just, it really is more of a anti-establishment kind of thing than, than anything, but he, and he says it way better than what I'm saying, but he on his Instagram, it's really worth watching. He's quite smart. And it was endearing to see him say, I, you, everybody can try to define me this is what I meant. And this is an art form. And I was just speaking my mind. That's, what I love about it more than anything, and you know more about it than, than I do, I didn't see that interview, but what I love about you, you're saying that is one of the things I've been, <laughs> I feel like I've been on the Jason Aldean Try That in a Small Town Tour because I have <laughs> talked 
to so many people Don't about it. Don't get Karen in trouble here. Well, I won't. And I and and the thing is, I mean, trust me, I've already said it all, and nobody cares because everybody has said a million things about it. But the one thing I that really bothered me the most Uh-oh. about that uh, was that was that they never they it felt like so all these people are upset and all these people are hurt by it, but there was never that conversation that you say Oliver Anthony had. It was more like doubling down. That's where I got put off, that it was just more of the same rhetoric because it was working and because it was firing up people. I just felt like, look, yeah, I don't think that's what you intended, um, but say that. Say that's not what, I'm, even if you had to say, I think some people are so afraid to apologize because they, they think it's an admission of guilt I, I think it's an apology that it hits someone like that. It's not an apology for the song. It's an apology that you have this platform and that people are receiving this. You know, a, a lot of people are receiving this as a direct hit. So the Oliver Anthony thing, I loved that, you know, different different um, political people have jumped on and tried to sort of claim the song and he's going, no. And I, I do too. Do, what Karen, what do you think is as far as politics, having had the commercial success that you have had, wh- where do you think that fault? Is it just different for different artists? Because we, you know, we know Bruce Springsteen got into politics some um, uh, and we loved it, but we also didn't know what he was talking about until later. I mean, what do you think about that? Do you stay away from it? Well, I'm in a band, so it's mm-hmm. not totally uh, my choice. I don't stay away from it, especially on the gun issue. Um, I'm quite passionate and very involved in Sandy Hook Promise. And right now, the Safer Tennessee movement um, is trying to get our politicians to listen to us. Um, the cut, you know, the the shooting in Las Vegas rocked us as a community and in a way that uh, changed us forever. And yet, it I was disappointed at the fact that I couldn't seem to rally one to make a public statement about it because we in country music are going to continue to refer to getting Dixie chicked out of the business for the rest of eternity, I guess. And I just think that's a bunch of BS. Um, I think when we're passionate about children being scared to go to school that's something worth fighting for. And if we don't, I mean, what, who are we? I mean, who are we that we would choose that over our children? I'm all about the second amendment. I'm married to a hunter. We lock up our guns. Nobody has the key to that. I don't even. And yet we couldn't even pass a a gun safety storage. See on a special session. I marched. I, I feel for those covenant parents. I, I mean, it's literally, I could walk to, you know, from my house. So it, it just really, it makes me sad sometimes to think about back in the day when Loretta Lynn could sing about the pill and really say the truth. Um, Johnny Cash could, whether it was fictional or not, say I killed a man. You know, he talked, they talked about things that were provocative. And a lot of times I think our genre, we, we continue to want to water it down because we're just afraid of a clash that we might get. Absolutely. And I think that's happening. I mean, I, I just was a part of a song that just came out uh, that Walker Hayes has recorded that is is called good with me and it basically it jokes in the verses about like this person thinks drinking bud light makes you gay this person thinks that covid was the chinese prank this person you know it's it really is just saying we are all so noisy and then it just goes to this silly sing along chorus but we're having so much pushback and not the kind of uh the pushback is that even saying those things, even acknowledging that people feel that way is, is too much. And 
the cancel and then culture. I, of course, yeah, it, it is. It's, it, it's cancel culture. People are just waiting for it. People are so scared. And uh, this song, <laughs> it's, it's the Bud Light line that everybody's like, well, I mean, you know, Bud Light is one of our sponsors. That they're talking about at radio stations. They're talking about wherever. Bud Light gives us a lot of money. And y'all are saying uh, drinking Bud Light makes you gay. And it's like, no, no, no. We're actually saying that's what some people think. And it's clear. It's not, you know, it's not. It, it's so frustrating then to know that on these playlists, they have no problem playing the Jason Aldean song. And that's because so many people talked about it. Me included, he actually owes me probably some money for all the attention <laughs> I've given that song. Um, we'll cash his chest. <laughs> it actually just seems like there's a double standard uh, when it comes to, I mean, and it, and it is out of fear. And it is because our country music's base is, um, I, I get, I, you know, is known to be more conservative. I actually think the word conservative has now been sort of tainted because I consider myself a conservative when it comes to traditional family values. I know I'm a gay man. I'm married to a man. We have children, but the truth is our values and we pray and we, you know, believe in doing the right thing and, and we believe in America. And it's all these things that almost, it feels like when you say or do those things, you're, you're, you're anti, uh, I guess, I guess anti-liberal or pro conservative and all these words are just so, terrible they've just we um, need a new we need a catch you know like uh not liberal, yeah, like like reasonable that's the party i want to belong to like the yeah, reasonable or, party <laughs> yeah don't and I, I really believe with all my heart that we most of america lives in the middle yeah, of beliefs you know um they identify with both sides also we feel this now it seems as though you can't have progressive thoughts and still be a patriot. Right. And that really bothers me because I am just as proud to be an American as anyone else is. And do you think we have a lot of messed up stuff going on in this country right now? Yeah. Am I still a patriot? Yes. Do I believe? Yes. But just because someone might say, well, you're more, you look like you're more liberal minded. That doesn't mean I'm less patriotic. And I don't know where that definition came in of like that. They get to own the flag on the artwork of the t-shirt, you know? Right. And, and I mean, I'm like, wait a minute. I mean, we, right, I'm just yeah, as patriotic. Un un and American. We, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, me, those covenant children and covenant parents, you know, I, I did get a lot of like emails and DMs that said, shut up and say, shut up and saying nobody gives a crap what you and your Hollywood friends or you artists think about guns or politics. And I'm like, I have a voice though. You have a voice. Right. I mean, and why you're, can't and you're, you're a mother. Why wouldn't you care about something like that? Just because that's your job doesn't mean you don't care as much as the person next to you. And like, that's where I think everybody just has to just strip down like all of these labels of like what we are and what we aren't. And we're all freaking human beings trying to make it through. And for you to want to feel that you want to be safe and you want everybody else's kid to go to school and be safe. And so you're willing to speak up on that you should be acknowledged for that because you don't have to do that. You do have the right to sit back and just sing your song and cash your checks if you wanted to. And it's so admirable that you're not doing that. Like the, it's such a weird opposite response there of what it should be. And, and I know you probably get a lot of support too, which is great because that's what that should be. You know, that should be the lead at like, Oh my gosh, look at, how supportive people who do have a platform, who do have a reach and look at what they're using it for. And you're not like suggesting, like you said, your husband's a hunter. You want everybody to be safe. You want people who want to utilize these weapons to do it in, a, in the right way. If there was more parameters 
and regulations surrounding that, a lot more people would be safe. And I don't understand why that's a bad thing. And um, it's like, I, just, I think it's commendable. Can I just say when it comes to, you know, quote, taking away people's guns, I definitely don't want to take away uh, your husband's g- guns because he looks so hot holding them. <laughs> and <Bad ass>. Gina. <laughs> So, and you're married, you're married to your band member, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. What's that like? Work? I don't, I don't think I could do it. That's hard. I yeah. Mean, that's where the guns would go <laughs> awry. You better take the guns. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's very talented and very handsome. And um, yeah, Shane does not mind look. looking at Jimmy. No. <laughs> that. And he lets me look. He does. He's, yeah. he's fine he with it. He appreciates your admiration. Um, <laughs> the good thing is that you both can deliver messages through your music, though. And in the subtle ways, like I was listening. So, you know, a lot of the times, the funny thing about Shane and I is he's so heavy into this country world. And I wasn't brought up. And I'm from New York and I just wasn't simply wasn't brought up in it, but I'm obviously getting more in it. like I, I actually am, like, I do love it now. Like I'm becoming a real to me now country music. I'm like a Swifty for country music, but so I'm trying to catch up. And it's funny. Cause like a lot of your music I have heard, you know, I just don't always know you guys, mm-hmm. but I'm telling you last night I was listening to some of it and some of the songs. And if I get the, Name's wrong. I apologize, but there was one song, um, like for the daughters. Is that? Oh yeah. I made yeah. me cry. It made me cry. It was so beautiful, and to me, I found that to be such a ballsy song too. It was delivered it in such a, but such a soft, gentle delivery. Like there was such balance to that song that was really delivering a really heavy message, but in such a. <clears throat> smart delicate way and that i think is such a skill set to be able to really impact and reach people because i really believe it is about delivery you have the left side and the right side and they're both coming at it so hard and they know a hundred percent of the time you're never going to move the needle and i just felt like that song was done so well it literally brought me to tears and i have a daughter so obviously it's you know more meaningful it is. It's such a simple concept, but it's like, it's okay to look at things and say, hmm, maybe that's not fitting for our time or for now. Maybe we should look at these things. Maybe we should make a shift. Maybe we should acknowledge this. Maybe we aren't doing everything. I just thought that song was so beautiful. I was like, I... Thank you. I can't even... I definitely I can't listen song... to it a lot because I can't be crying my, my eyelashes off everywhere. Right <laughs> but it's beautiful. I think Thank that's all that preemptive well. as to what happened in the Barbie movie. I mean, I think it, we have to constantly, and I want you to speak on this, Karen, uh, but I, I think we sort of have to constantly remind ourselves that our girls have been put in second position. And I sat watching that Barbie movie, and when I listened to that song, and when things happen, and I think, how is this still happening? I watched my daughter watching the Barbie movie. And I mean, that you talk, that just like knocked the wind out of me. And I'm constantly making sure she's getting, I'm going, you understand that the world has been set up this way, but you don't have to abide by that, you know? And so anyway, I, Karen, it is so commendable. Recording songs like that, continuing to speak up and, and for everyone. But, but what do you think? I mean, first of all, I remember when you first sent me that song, you, we were at a time first, I don't know if it was during COVID. I don't remember why, but I remember us having, you were like, listen to this song that we just got. Um, yeah. Talk about that. Yeah. I wrote that with Sean McConnell and Ashley Ray, and it was birthed out of a conversation about um, my puppy just, barged in the door. Um, hey, girl. Uh, it was part of a conversation of, it's kind of when the Me Too movement was happening and uh, just continually like, wh- where are the champions for the girls? Where are the, and, and we said it in a provocative way of where is God for the daughters? Um, and 
at first, some people that heard it were like, I, of course, God is for the daughters. And I'm like, you know, you're, you're missing the point where, of course, uh, if you believe in God or a universal power, yes, um, God is for the daughters. I'm asking the question, why are we still dealing in this patriarchy, this system of, it's even more relevant than it was five years ago when we wrote it. I mean, I, we're ba- we're taking backward steps all the time. Not only do we not have control over our bodies anymore, but we can't protect our children. Mm-hmm. And women are going to change the world on this subject. I'm, I'm telling you, we're about to see a reckoning and it's going to be the mamas that come out to say, I'm not going to live like this anymore. Like can't for my body and think you can tell me what I can do and you, and not protect my children, you know? So I, I think there's going to be a reckoning and, and boy singing that song, the dog's in a show now important than it's ever been and and i see the dads and the brothers and the granddads out there too raising their beers up like i see you and i know what you're saying Mm -hmm. and so it gives me thinking about it It gives me hope um and the girls that know feeling of making themselves smaller in a room because they feel like their voice isn't as important because they'll end up raising their arms up, you know, when we start singing that. And and it's supposed to be a disruptor, and art is supposed to disrupt. And if I didn't get a chance to see some of those things as an artist, I think I would just feel like I'm not doing my job. What's funny is all of the, so our default setting and the way that the the, the brilliance of that song was, you know, we know about the God for the sons because that's our default pronoun it's always in the he. And, um, well, was, I wonder who wrote the Bible. <laughs> well, well, it's not like they let any chicks in there. I mean, I'm just, saying. <laughs> it, it is, I don't think along the, I mean, it's, you know, it's just like the, the, the story of Adam and Eve and how Eve was made of Adam's rib and, it was no. all her fault too. With everything that happened, absolutely, of course it was. <laughs> and and so I think what's so crazy to me is when I start thinking about all the things that really do make a difference. Let's talk about Oprah Winfrey. Let's talk about Michelle Obama. Let's talk about Taylor Swift, who is now completely taken over the world. We're talking about the Barbie movie. It's funny to me that that still happens because to me, all the all the proof is there. All the information is right there, but somehow we still have this default setting that we, you know, as, uh, well, I'll say as men, but it's not just men, by the way. I mean, it is, it is a, you know, there's a lot of women who- We're great at tearing each other down. I mean, we have a whole, I'm I'm part of a whole brand that just, we get out. I fight women professionally on TV. That's like (laughs) what I, you know- Gina, you know what? Dash, I'm part of the problem. You know what Dash said to me the other night? I was watching the show and Dash came in and he goes, what is it that you like so much about old ladies fighting? <laughs> Stop it. I'm the young one. You are, young. You are the young. <laughs> but it's old but, ladies you know, to fighting. A, to a 10 year old, he's like, that's all they ever do. Um, it's but like that's, our sports. That's why. I think it's so fun to watch. I think, I I mean, I think a lot of people that don't, that have a judgment about that are like, Oh, I don't watch the housewives. I'm like, well, you know what? It's, it, I don't, that's guilty pleasure. Yeah, exactly. It's just fun. It's just, it's, Oh, thank you, Karen. (laughs) Yeah. It's like comfort food to me. It's like, I got to see what they're doing. Like, what are they talking about? And yeah, I need, I need the, I need the The escape of watching It is. I need the escape of what your troubles are, you know? <laughs> Ours are always way worse. I understand. You're like, 
Oh, you it's to regulate, right? You watch us and you're like, wait, okay, I'm doing okay. I'm doing way better than I thought. <laughs> I'm gonna be fine. Like we're here Karen, for you to make you Gina, feel better about yourself. <laughs> uh, Gina took me to the the clubhouse and uh, watch what happens live last week. And I know I the bartender. Yeah, oh it was so God. great. It was so fun. it was so surreal, especially being in the clubhouse where all of the different, you know. What I, they're like museum pieces. I mean, Tamara's, uh, what do you call uh, the implant? And yeah. then the bunny that Kim Richards uh, wouldn't accept from Lisa. Um, my tracks are in there. Did you know that? Oh my God, the famous tracks. My tracks, tracks are up in that clubhouse somewhere. I didn't even see them. I was so afraid <laughs> yeah. to move from the he bar. Prob- I was they're like, probably hidden like behind a book or something. Oh my God. I have tracks. always, I've, I've always wanted to go to the clubhouse. Um, I love Andy and I love watching you guys on there all the time. And Shane, I saw that you were on there and I'm good. I didn't, I watched clips of it, but I got to go back and watch the whole thing. And I love that you were bartending. <laughs> I Especially know. since I'm sober. So <laughs> You're sober. Um, oh, so- Oh, just to stay, I couldn't even hardly, I was so glad that it only got sort of thrown to me one time because I was, I was so nervous. I didn't even really, you know, I I met Andy briefly. I didn't realize that I was going to be a little, um, I was crushing on him a little bit. He's, he's got, Oh my God! I mean, so cute. He is so cute. He also has to me the best job in the world. The way the setup is in that room and everybody is just having fun. It is just like, the energy when you walk in, they're all so nice. It's just fun. And I think sort of like what happened with, you know, us, the timing of Shucked. And also Gina Karen is one of the producers on Shucked. And um, the, the um, it was, it's just the timing of sometimes people just want to have fun. All the things we've just talked about. Yes, that's going on. But guys, sometimes you just want to exhale and go, can we just mindlessly laugh like we mm-hmm. used to? And that yeah, felt and I, like- I do appreciate artists and I don't judge them when they don't want to say something political or they want to be the escape because we have seen the power of the way Shucked does that. It is belly aching for two hours and glorious singing and the ridiculous, hilarious jokes. And you just you just you're laughing until you're crying like i have not laughed out loud that hard in so long and it feels completely there yeah you really do sometimes we just need that we need to just put on the tv and not walk away feeling bad or go see a show and leave feeling good i mean you need to have the balance that's how your concert felt in santa barbara i mean it there you have moments of of quiet and you have moments where you're saying, you know, where you're really connecting with, with the audience on some bigger issues, but really it's about day drinking. (laughs) No, I'm serious. It's just like, let's just have fun. And I can't, you know, encourage, and this is not, we're not, you know, required to do a commercial for a little big town, but I just can't encourage people enough to go and see you guys, if you're anywhere close, it is spiritual. And it feels like the audience is together. You're looking around at people, whether you know the songs or you don't, it's just like you're in the together. You know, one thing, um, this is, I I know we're going probably longer than we meant to, but I, I, I have to ask you this. One of the things I've noticed about Shucked and the camaraderie in the room and the community in the room I've been trying to figure out why does it feel so different on Broadway? Why does it feel different in these rooms? I think it's because there's no phones. I'm curious as to mm. what it's like being on stage and you've been through, you you guys were big before the everybody was videoing and watching you through a phone the entire time. And now you're on this side of things where I feel like most of the audience is watching you through their camera. What does that well, feel that like up there? Well, that brings up also, there was that issue and um, correct me if I'm wrong, but Karen, you're friends with Miranda Lambert, right? Mm-hmm. And that was that whole thing. I, I, that's, I'm very interested to hear your point of view on that too. What the, what happens with the girl taking the selfie. I'm sure there was more to that too, obviously, but. 
Yeah. I, it's a different world. I, it is a different world. And, um, I obviously I'm team Miranda all the yeah, way. I mean, she's your girl. I, like <laughs> I, I know her and so, so does Shane. She didn't say something. If that had been on and a girl taking a quick selfie, she would have never stopped the show. Those girls were taking a powerful moment of Tin Man where she's saying something very and the stands down so that she's as close and intimate as she can be with the crowd. And they're right there ruining that moment for the entire crowd who also paid to see her sing that moment. So I see it differently. But that's also the details that a lot of people don't get. No, that's very interesting. Yeah. Because they were taking flash photography and they were like, you know, boobs out and, and and she's acoustic influencer moment. And so I, I, I just want people to stop and think about that for a minute. What that was like for Miranda delivering a moment to the whole crowd, not just those couple of girls stopping that moment for everyone. So she, she's just, that's just who she is. She's like, Hey, this is starting to really bother me. Y'all had to stop your show recently. Tell that story. Yeah. I mean, there were people and and fist fighting and I was like, Hey, and it was right in the middle of rich man, which is another beautiful like song about what's really important in life. And why can't they do it in a tornado? That's what I said. So why could I I mean, how selfish. (laughs) And so we stopped the song for a minute and um, we started singing. You are my sunshine to the crowd because our friend Jack Ingram used to do that when people would fist fight in a show or a festival. And so I was like, well, Kimberly said, Hey, we, this isn't anything we've seen. I mean, that we, we we're used to this, like that this, we know this is what rednecks do and they fight, but cut it out. And, and so we just broke out into you are my sunshine and the whole crowd started singing it and looking at those people fighting <laughs> and they stopped. They were like, Okay, well, this is embarrassing. And they started so, making out. Yeah. <laughs> they started making out. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, okay, so. Wow, we're really 180. We, well, it was hot. Um, <laughs> so as we come to the end of this, uh, of this very thought-provoking and also just entertaining conversation, we have to do something that may or may not sit right with you. Karen, oh. this is just something that we, um, we've started doing accidentally. Speaking of accidents. I mean, nobody ever does this intentionally. <laughs> no, but what Gina and I have found I'm is scared. that a lot, of, a lot of people <laughs> poop their pants or have situations yeah. where it comes on fast and strong and they're not in the most um, convenient location. And with mine, what started it was I told a story about this time I had to shit in this canoe in front of this God, it was a lot. And uh, we, we've it put Walker Hayes on the spot. And now we're going to put you on the spot. Is there anything that you feel really comfortable or, or more importantly, uncomfortable telling us um, about maybe a time when you or, you know, someone else in the band or someone else you work with that might have had, uh, you know, some bowel problems? We call it the poop scoop. The poop scoop. Poop scoop. Um, I'm not going to rat anybody out in my own band because <laughs> it's going so well. I mean, this because can't be it's the going thing so well. To break you I'm up. sorry, but I'm positive. <laughs> Sweet Kimberly has has really. I mean, y'all been friends too long, but you don't have to tell the story, but you know, I'm just, I know she's, she's too sweet. I mean, there's no way that, that something has not, um, has not rattled her to the point of, of, uh, shitting herself, but we're not going to get into it. She, listen, if she ever did, it would smell of cinnamon and cloves. Oh, you know, it would, I mean, she is an <laughs> angel on this earth and it is, it is cinnamon it wouldn't, for sure. We don't think she poops, but, um, <laughs> I, my, my favorite, possible pooping moment um or 
what would you call the slight letting go moment? The letting go, the release, the, the, uh, <laughs> the and, and like, an, be a, like an uh, untrustworthy part. Is that what we're, cause the okay, walkers yeah, had yeah. some experience with that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I me saying this because it's Luke Bryan and oh, he's I mean, just a funny, he's a funny so guy <laughs> and this is so he's not, hopefully not going to get mad at me, but we had I a song doubt together. Luke listens to this, but I will send him this episode. <laughs> we had, had a song that went number one together and um, he, when we were on tour together and underneath the, his big stage, um, I would get on this like almost like a roller coaster ride. I'd lay down flat and go underneath the stage and he would be singing some sexy ballad up on the piano. The girls are losing it. I'd be getting eared up and getting ready because he would come down the stage and then meet me underneath, you know, underneath the world, of the bottom of the stage. And then we would come up through this lift, like really tall facing each other and sing our song. Well, night he, he came down oh, from boy. singing like, I wish I could remember what he has so many like sexy songs where the girls go wild and he comes down and he goes, Hey, God, I think I just shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh and my God. He goes, I do. I had to, I had to get big Mike to check my pants. Cause what? I think I, Farted so hard that I shit my pants. What does but, checking his pants consist of? Looking kidding. down? No, oh, when he says him? I had to check my pants just to make sure. Oh, my God. Big Mike, but, um, you deserve a raise. Big Mike's and a hero. I think, I think it must have just been a you know flagellation of some, some sort. And he was, he was all good to go up on the, on the ramp together. And then that's all I could think about the whole time we were singing that song. And you like, had to be serious and like try to play this character of, oh. you know, be, being in love and there was all, I mean, whoo, that is, I mean, I'm sh- that just to stand there and you guys were close. What a professional. I feel, I feel like maybe he told you because you know how sometimes you're, you just want to make sure that in case the person smells something that <laughs> you have let them know that you're aware. Okay. Like, listen, if I smell like shit, that's because I shit myself. <laughs> right. Disclaimer. I, you have, you guys, have you guys talked about the, on your poop scoop, the, the Delta incident? Oh God, oh. no, we haven't. Remember on Delta Airlines, what just happened where that woman had diarrhea and they had to land the plane? What? For I, diarrhea? Like, oh, because he in the seats? I, I, I think I, down the aisle and maybe uh, towards the bathroom. And I, that made me want to cry for Hugh because that would be horrifying. But how and bad does it have to be to land the plane? I guess it's a biohazard. I'm- <laughs> Man. <laughs> Weapons I don't of know. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Understand. I mean, I I've done d- some. I've done some major. Uh, what would be room clearing farting on airplanes where people can't leave? Uh, I mean, awful. honestly, my husband would say that I really enjoy that, and it is entertaining. <laughs> You're um, a disruptor. That's what you are. <laughs> Oh my god! I hope Luke doesn't get mad at me for telling that. But well, maybe uh, it'll help if I tell you. Crazy enough, I have a Luke Bryan poop story. <laughs> um, I years ago went out on the road with him, and it was one of the first times an artist. I mean, this was early, and it was one of the first times I had ever been invited to go like on the bus and ride with someone. And um, it wasn't one of those big groups like where you know where a bunch of us will go. It was just me. And we went out on the road and we were in a casino way up north and it was snowing and we were trapped in this casino and Luke loves to gamble. I don't know if he still does, but he did then. It was a weird casino because the craps table weirdly had table, I mean, chairs around it, which I've never seen. But Luke all day before the show was just sitting there playing craps and he got on a roll and it uh, is a strange coincidence that he was playing a game called craps. Cause let me tell you something. He told me, I have to 
go to the bathroom, but I ain't leaving this roll. And he didn't. He sat right there and some stuff happened. And um <laughs> and when he, when he oh, left the table when, just to clear his name. when finally, <laughs> You're really forcing his hand here. He'll have to come on here just to clear his name and the air. And, and all um, of it. So <laughs> when it was said and done and he finally crapped out, um <laughs> He got up and to walk away from the table and he was walking that real funny, like straight leg walk to make sure nothing f- fell out. And um, he just was, he just walked out real fast, but uh, that was sort of the extent of it. And, and uh, that, that happened. I bet he doesn't even remember that, but well, uh, who would? At least, I, would, I would block that out for sure. At least now Karen won't just be the only one who completely threw him <laughs> under the shitty bus. Yeah. I mean, um, we used to think that a bus driver that we had, War depends because we never stopped in the middle of the night. And we were like, how is he doing that? And then we opened and the four of us were just getting started. We opened up the bay on the bottom of the bus and we found depends. Shut up. Uh-uh. That is hilarious. I have never heard that. I mean, it makes sense, but um, what a commitment to getting the job done. I mean, I mean that's com- Commitment. That man deserves a raise. Absolutely. He's no longer with us, but <laughs> on this earth or with y'all? No, 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 no. I think he's on this earth. Oh. But um he's just he's no just, longer he's somewhere shitting in a diaper. Um on on that note, we can't thank you enough for being a part of this, especially with so little notice. I know you had to move some stuff around. Karen, we really appreciate it. I love you so much and you know how I feel about you and and Gina was so excited to meet you. And this is a, I really am. It was such a pleasure and thank you for being so fun and so open. Well, thank you for having me. And, um, I can't wait to meet you in person. I know. I hope I do. This is incredible. And also if I ever get on, they have the opportunity to do Dancing with the Stars. I've already said I want to dance too. There's another song. Whiskey, gin, beer, some order. Oh, uh, the, the wine, the beer, whiskey. Yeah. I'm like, I got to <laughs> dance to that song. Yeah, that's going on my playlist. I'm going to be rocking out to that in my car for sure. Oh, that's my mom's favorite song too. Oh, so good. Well, <laughs> well, Shane and I have a running joke about his sweet angel, Dylan, that she wrote me a note when she was much younger. It was during COVID. And what did she say, Shane? Um, oh my God, she wrote Karen a note, Gina. No joke. Well, during COVID, we were, we were basically a, a, a tribe. They uh, have a place right down the street from where we had a place and we were all that we were sort of in the bubble together and that, you know, Karen would come over and, and have wine and we would just hang out and, and Dylan wrote her a note that said, I love the way you drink. You're so pretty when you drink or I, yes, I love you. God. I love you. And you're so pretty when you drink. That's and it. You're so pretty when you drink. And Karen we was like, what, what does this mean? I said, That's I think it's amazing. Stop. No one has mean, ever said that to me. Why I am now sober. <laughs> I, I mean, feel maybe, good about that. I don't know if I should or not, but I, I have kept that card forever. I, I have it so much. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, um, we should pick this up and have a, a a sequel at some point. Karen, thank you again, and and Gina, we'll we'll talk soon. Okay, guys. Bye, Bye guys. Love y'all. Love you, Karen. <laughs>